Hello everyone! We are still in the series of discussing the scientific method in a greater detail. The previous video is discussed overview of scientific method followed by the problem statement and hypothesis, and our last one was on methodology. So after creating your methodology and performing your experiment, we will now learn how to present your data using tables and graphs. Take a look at this graph. What do you think is wrong with it? In presenting our data, we have to consider how neat and understandable it should appear. Data can be presented in many ways such as charts and graphs. However, we choose what is best with respect to the purpose of presenting the data. In the graph that we have shown, it may be neat, but it lacks some important details like title, axis labels, and even proper intervals. These are very important elements that should always be present in our graphs. Now, let's enumerate some ways on how we can present our data. Data tables are used to organize the qualitative or quantitative data that we want to present. We would not want to read a list of results or description in a paragraph, right? So we use a data table to organize them. For example, instead of writing the results in a paragraph form like this, we can actually put the results in a data table like this. And notice that in constructing your data table, the left column is your independent variable, while the next column or columns will be your dependent variable. Using the problem statement, the purpose of this study is to identify the effect of increasing amounts of salt on the boiling point of water. Our sample data table could look like this. Notice that the unit of measurements are included in the variable labels. Meanwhile, we can also use a bar graph to present data if our purpose is to compare them. Notice that we can easily make the comparison based on the height of the bars in a graph. In this example, I just graph the average, but you may graph all the three trials too to show multiple bars per independent variable like this. A line graph, on the other hand, could also be used to present data, especially if the main goal is to show a trend, such as an increase or decrease in the results. Again, you can also plot all the values that we obtain from the data table to obtain multiple lines in a graph. Pie charts are also used to present data. However, it only shows parts of a whole and not necessarily the effect of the independent variable to the dependent variable. For example, you want to show how much of the world's wastes are recycled. A pie chart can do the job for that. And lastly, we have the scatter plot. It is used to show the distribution of data which may show the correlation between the variables. In a scatter plot, the dependent variable may have multiple values for each of the values of the independent variable. One very good example of a type of data that uses a scatter plot is height and weight of a person. For example, you surveyed a group of people and asked them their heights and weights. As you plot the values in the graph, it will show you how distributed your data points are. And soon, it will show you if the variables have a relationship. On top of that, you may notice that there may be a person that has a height of 160 and 170 centimeters, but both weigh at 150 pounds or two persons with a height of 120 centimeters but with different weights. This is what we meant by distribution. So there you have it. To end, I know that graphing is usually confusing, but we can always remember why we are presenting the data. And when we have identified the purpose, then we can also identify which graph is to be used. I hope that you learned something new. See you in our next video. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.